You'll never know. Yo, these birds talking that shit for a long time. I wonder whether the way I started my League of Legends journey set me up for more challenges than most players face. Looking back, I realized that I unknowingly made my own path much harder. Think back to the early days when you were just discovering your playstyle and champion pulling in League. Maybe you come from fighting games like Tekken or Street Fighter, so champions like Set appeal to you. Or perhaps you were drawn to mages like Wei if you had experience in MMOs like World of Warcraft or Black Desert Online. For me, it was Azir. His kit and design matched my background perfectly, in. but this choice will ultimately come with some serious drawbacks. In this video, I'll dive into why picking such a difficult champion like Azir during my blissfully ignorant early days impacted my growth and development in the game. Only recently have I been able to undo some of the mistakes that come from one trick in this bird. Before we begin discussing why Azir ruined me as a League player for a long time, I want to discuss why he became my favorite champion of all time. Back in Season 7 when I started my journey, I picked up the ADC role because I found joy in consistent damage and being the biggest crybaby on my team with the main character syndrome. It was really fun for a while, but it did not feel satisfying the more I played bot lane. With that being said, I had a background in MMOs with games such as Sulk Road and Arc Age, playing mainly mages. I also had an expansive background in real-time strategy genre, games such as Red Alert and Age of Empires where I learned to command units on the battlefield. As a result, I discovered Azir, the ADC mage hybrid that commands soldiers fit my playstyle like a glove. The consistent damage of the ADC with the burst damage of mages that Azir offers was unprecedented. The ability to apply presence through area control with his soldiers is the most unique ability in the entire game in my opinion, and that is why he clicked with me. I love Azir's playstyle with the safety of his range, ultimate, and dash provided. For anyone who enjoys mages ADC hybrids, he offered everything I could ask for. Yet, beneath all that fun I was having, parts of my gameplay experience were gradually unraveling in ways I couldn't fully understand until years later. Choosing him as my main turned out to be a major mistake. Beginning with Azir's design, Azir is classified as a specialist, which is the former zoner class pre-7.10 patch. The specialist is a diverse group of champions who do not fit into your normal classes of league, regarding other class or subclass specifications. Many specialists exhibit zone control either as a dominant or secondary attribute. A specialist or zone controller is a champion whose influence is limited either to telegraphed zones, such as Azir's soldiers, or a large threat ability such as Fiddlestick's Crowstorm. As a zone controller, Azir creates intense pressure with his soldiers, deterring enemies from entering areas he controls. The problem arises with Azir's ability to summon and manage such soldiers. According to the ability description, Arise, Azir holds up to, up to maximum of two soldiers. Emptying your soldier magazine of two in a suboptimal location during a teamfight brings Azir's pressure and damage down to zero when used incorrectly. Contrast that to Syndra, where missing your Q is not the end of the world as you can still use the orbs on the ground to increase your ultimate damage and one shot whoever is unfortunate clicked on skillfully. With Azir, yes, you can use Azir's Q, conquering sands, to order all sand soldiers to dash toward the target location, dealing damage and slowing enemies they pass through. However, this ability is max second and having a 14 second cooldown rank 1 with 70 cost is brutal. Shifting sands grants Azir a shield and dashes to the target sand soldier dealing damage to enemies within his path. If Azir collides with an enemy champion, he stops and gains a charge of Sand Soldier to summon. Shifting Sands, however, is max last on Azir and rank 1 ability has a 22 second cooldown. 9 times out of 10, Shifting Sands is used defensively. Fine. But this strategy is only effective if you have a soldier available to summon and we already discussed how summoning all two of your soldiers at the wrong place and time will leave you with no way of dashing out of danger and only towards the misplaced soldiers which can be a death sentence. Azir is not completely useless outside of his soldiers however. Azir's ultimate, Emperor's Divide, calls forth a flanx of soldiers, 175 units behind him and moving forward in the target direction, stopping and acting as impassable terrain against enemies. Enemies caught in Emperor's Divide are dealt an insane amount of magic damage. Maxed out, Emperor's Divide deals a base of 600 with a 75% AP ratio. On paper, 
His ultimate is amazing when you're getting piled on by the enemy team. Until you realize that any champion with dashes can go over the wall like Nivea's wall once Azir's ultimate stops moving. During ancient times, Azir's ultimate used to knock back champions when dashing through his wall like Poppy's steadfast presence. Unfortunately, Riot removed this mechanic as it was not fun for the game. Well, a party pooper. Party pooper so, you have a champion that is completely reliant on correct use of his soldiers as the rest of his basic abilities depend on such correct use of soldiers. As such, misuse of Azir's soldiers will subsequently deplete the rest of Azir's abilities effectiveness, which is what makes him so difficult to play well. His margin of error is pixel thin. Another reason why playing Azir was a big mistake is due to Eagle Champion. Playing Azir early on let me feel unique in the game, almost like I had some higher calling. Due to his rarity on the rift and unique kit, I felt special. Yes, sounds weird to say, but I did feel special. Easy way to skip learning basics of League is to hide it behind playing a difficult champion that can show off, but gain nothing productive in terms of improving on the rift. That is why, if you look at my op.gg, I was hard stuck platinum player from season 9 in 2019 to season 13 in 2023. I did not realize it during that period, but that ego boost turned into a blind spot. Instead of learning fundamentals such as correct wave management, value trades, side laning, and team fighting, I was fixated on mastering Azir. Without realizing it, I started blaming my mistakes during the game on Azir's low win rate and pick rate rather than my own lack of game knowledge. For example, I used to take much more frequent high risk Azir plays such as flashy shuffles instead of taking safer, smarter ways of going about making good plays. It felt great when it worked, but I was missing out on learning core strategies, the basics of League of Legends such as correct positioning during team fights and good macro and good laning phase. I also joined, unfortunately, the Zier main subreddit, oh god biggest mistake in my life, where it was and still is a place where everyone thinks they are a tactical genius but love to complain about how weak Azir is and what the perfect build is and room page. Whenever Azir gets nerfed, everyone complains that he is now the weakest champion in the game, yet Riot nerfs him for poor play. I believe that there is just a few people that are good enough on Azir where said nerfs are impactful. Looking back at it, I believe joining that dumb Azir reddit reinforced my struggles with Azir as a champion and further made me believe it is the champion's fault I am sucking than my own lack of game knowledge. Finally, it was the difficulty of playing easier champions when playing Azir. I was setting myself up for failure when it came to other champions and the broader game concepts due to one trick in Azir. By molding my playstyle exclusively based on a single champion, it became that much more difficult switching playstyles when picking other champions that are easier to execute. Due to Azir's kit being so distinctive, with his soldier positioning and micromanagement, that I got used to playing a mini game within each fight. However, when I try to apply a simpler champion, such as Annie or Twisted Fate, suddenly you're not managing soldiers or setting up complex areas of control, so it feels like something is missing. Champions without these mechanics feel almost too simple for someone who one-tricked one of the most difficult champions in the game. However, the simplicity requires a new mindset, one that is hard to switch to when Azir has trained one to think 5 steps ahead every second, or you'll die. Another aspect of what made playing other champions difficult is the contrast in mobility and control relative to other champions. Azir has a unique mobility within his Shreema Shuffle and Soldier placements, which offer a ton of control over his positioning and the battlefield as he pleases. Other champions do not have that same kind of dynamic movement, which can make them feel restrictive. This shift can feel limiting or frustrating because you lose the precise control one has developed when playing a champion such as Azir for a long period of time. For example, switching to a champion like Annie or Lux, who lack high mobility, can be jarring. Going from weaving through fights to having to stay relatively stationary more often, which can lead to poor positioning habits. I think a more important factor, however, is the perceived drop in mechanical skill of other champions. Azir's difficulty raises one's personal standards for mechanics. When you switch to a straightforward champion that feels like your skill has dropped, you may have less to focus on in terms of individual mechanics, but it can expose weaknesses in other areas like positioning or timing for objectives. This perceived drop in skill can be frustrating and makes it hard to see one's growth with other champions, even if you are technically playing them absolutely fine. For a long time, I strictly remember finding it mentally difficult to pilot easier champions even though objectively I was playing normally. By one tricking a highly specialized champion can almost pigeonhole, pun intended, oneself in approaching the game, making it hard to enjoy or succeed with other champions. It reinforces the idea that Azir, while rewarding in some ways, can be a bit of a trap in terms of broader skill development.
So here we are. I still play Azir on the daily, but there is a difference. I took long breaks from Azir and had many life-changing uh, events where they indirectly allowed me to see League in a new, more enjoyable perspective. I remember why I enjoyed playing Azir in the first place, but I also realized uh, that mistakes I made in my journey. I received coaching and started to review my games and ask critical questions rather than blind picking the champion every game. I started to learn what runes to pick based on the team compositions, what build to go for, but most importantly, I started learning the actual fundamentals of League of Legends. As a result, I peaked D4, Split 3, Season 14, and still climbing. If I get to go back and start again, I would not pick Azir without realizing the long-term consequences. Picking easier champions such as Annie, Syndra would save your mental well-being. Trust me, it's worth it in the long term. Thank you so much for watching this documentary. It is my first one. Uh, it would mean so much if you hit the like button uh, and subscribe. And uh, please comment if you have any suggestions how I could do better and such. So again, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.